Lord. And for the few moments that are mine to stand before you, I want to tag this sermon and remind all of us this morning that God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. My beloved brothers and sisters, I like watching television, probably a little bit too much. And I like shows that most ha have uh, some kind of law enforcement, action, yes. drama, series like FBI, and FBI Most Wanted, FBI International. They do all that for me, right? You know, if they just keep adding. Law and Order, Law and Order, SV, SUV, CSI, CSI Miami, and NCIS, NCIS New Orleans, NCIS Hawaii. And obviously, I watch way too much television. But they are all filled with law enforcement action, shoot them up, catch the criminal, you know, and, and, and take the bad guy to jail. Amen. I like that. But one of the catchphrases, usually, especially a lot in NCIS, is for any of, of you who watch it, is an a agent called Agent Donozo. And he always says to Gibbs, when it's time to get ready to go somewhere and do something, and Gibbs said, let's go, he says, boss, I'm on your six. I'm on your six. Or Agent McGee, I'm on your six. And it's a dated term because, first of all, it deals with your watch, and people don't wear watches anymore. So to help you understand what being on your six means, if you had a watch and you were facing 12, six is behind you. So what Donozo and McGee are saying to Gibbs is, I'm on your six. I got your back. I got your back. So we're saying... In the natural, there are people who tell you every day, I got your back, I got you, I got you girl, I got you guy. Friends and coworkers, I got you. Church members, those who are part of our family that we acknowledge, amen. I got you, I got you, don't worry. I will not let you down, you are my ride or die, BFF. You are my, hold my mule. That's an old Alabama, I have to, that's a whole nother sermon. I have to explain that to you. I got you. And, and it, to, there's a story that's told about, you know, a friend helping out another friend. And he, and he said to him, I am your friend, your forever friend. And if you are in trouble, I will be there for you. I will be there to help you. I will be there to help get you out. And if I can't get you out, Reverend Ridley, I'm going to jump in with you. We are friends forever. I got your back. But in the natural, depending on the time of day, the situation, the circumstances, the environment, whether other people are looking, whether there's somebody else around who will pay attention, Follow my drift. In the natural, people will claim to have your six. I got your back. But when you need them, they disappear. However, in the supernatural, when we think of what God has already said to us, we know God always has our back. In the supernatural, Psalm 27 says, even when our mother and father forsake us, then the Lord will lift us up. So we know that God is faithful. God is always on our side. God will never leave us or forsake us. His track record of being our BFF is perfect. Every time we call, he is there. Every time we need him, he is there. Every time we whisper his name, Jesus, he comes to see about us. God is faithful. I said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I've got you. I got you back. I'm on your six. And God says, you can count on me. I have a plan for your life, a perfect plan. 
and I'll provide all of your needs even before you ask them because I know everything about you. I'll put your enemies in their place and put your frenemies in their place too. God is faithful. But our text reminds us today, one thing we can count on is that if God is for us, who can be against us? Who can stand against what God has told us to do? Who can stand against God's plan for your life? If God is for us, who shall we fear? Who can do anything against God's elect? If God is for us, then who can block our blessings when God is pouring them on us each and every day of our lives? If God is for us. Who can stop the anointing and the favor of God that's all over you and all over your family and all over your children, all over your work, everything that you are doing? If God is for us, who can stop you from moving forward, stop you from getting the promotion, stop you from moving into the things of God? If God is for us, and who can throw rocks and hide their hand? If God is for us. We put our hope in the Lord because if God is for us, there's nobody, nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Because he promised us in Malachi that he would open the windows of heaven, pour our blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. He promised us in Lamentations 3, 22 and 24, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new. Every morning, great is thy faithfulness. His promises are yes and amen. His sovereign track record is perfection in, in our lives. We may not understand it, but whatever God is doing in your life, it's perfection. His word gives hope to the desperate, strength to the weak, Perseverance to the weary, reassurance to the troubled, encouragement to the downtrodden. God is faithful. So we have to trust him and know that he has an inexhaustible supply of everything. Everything that you need, God has it. Love, power, blessings, compassion, goodness, mercy, favor, whatever it is you need from the Lord, he already has it. We also know that our test, our faith is born out of our test our trials, our pain, and our tragedy. But the good thing, the good news is that faithfulness comes from trusting God and knowing that he will be with us. Faithfulness reassures us and requires us to submit our ways to God, realizing that we need a savior and that he is in control of all our lives. Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Isaiah 25 and 1 says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things planned long ago. Psalm 115 says, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. So then what shall we say to these things? These things, what shall we say that we need to give credit to whom credit is due? God is alive in our lives. He is faithful in everything that he has told us to do, and he deserves our perpetual praise. There's a reason we rejoice, because God is faithful. There's a reason we worship, because God is faithful. There's a reason we love, because God is faithful. His beauty is manifest in the skies and the forest. His power is represented in the sweep of the ocean. His majesty is portrayed in the gigantic bodies suspended in our universe. God is faithful. So what, what shall we say to these things? The wind and the rain, the lightning and the thunder, the creatures that inhabit our land, the flowers that brighten our lives, all of this comes from God's hand. And the glory is not ours. It belongs to God. So what shall we say? What shall we say to these things? Even the achievements of human hand, of human minds, of human machines come by the way of wisdom and power for our eternal God. 
the contributions of science, the fields ripe for harvest, the control of our rivers, the activity in our cities, the establishment of our institutions. All of this, all of these things reflect the glory of God in our lives. So we know, because we've already seen the evidence of God, the miracles that he's performed in our lives each and every day. So even as a people, we know that God is faithful. Because today, my brothers and sisters, is August 28th. And we know that 59 years ago, today, was the date of the celebrated and renowned March on Washington. And we know it was the most well-orchestrated, nonviolent, peaceful protest known in history. And the speech given by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King at the Lincoln Memorial that everybody quotes and everybody repeats and everybody recites was given on that day. I have a dream. And so this speech reminds us that the word, and the word reminds us of how far we have come and how much further we have to go. Dr. King reminded us that we've been through a lot, but we're still not at a level playing field. On August 28th, 1963, over 260,000 people from all over the world came to Washington to stand up, to speak out, and to march for jobs, freedom, justice, equality, voting rights, to end discrimination, and to fight for equality for Americans of color. 1963, 2022. And because of their continued protests and prayers and action, Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which this con the previous Congress gutted by not passing the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. But that's okay, because we know God is faithful. But on August 28th, Dr. King gave a speech, but about four or five months before that, in April of 1963, he wrote a letter in the Birmingham jail. Allow me to share some snippets from this letter before the March on Washington. And he says, seldom do I pause to answer criticism, my work, and my ideas. He also said to them, be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We're caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And when they were talking to him about being an extremist, he said to them, was not Amos an extremist for justice? Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Was not Paul an extremist for the Christian gospel? I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Was not Martin Luther an extremist? Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise, so help me God. So the question is not whether we are extremists, but what kind of extremists? Will we be extremists for hate or will we be extremists for love? He also said to them, the goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up with America's destiny. Before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before the pen of Jefferson etched the majestic works of the Declaration of Independence across the pages of history, we were here. For more than 200 cent two centuries, our forebearers labored in this country without wages. They made cotton king. They built the homes of their masters while suffering gross injustice and shameful humiliation. And yet, out of the bottomless vitality, they continued to thrive and develop. If the inexpressible cruelties of slavery could not stop us, this opposition will surely fail today. 1963. He said, perhaps it is easy for those who have never felt the stinging darts of segregation to say, you need to wait. 
But when you've seen vicious mobs lynch your mothers and fathers at will and drown your brothers and sisters at whim, when you've seen hate-filled policemen curse, kick, and even kill your black brothers and sisters, when you see the vast majority of your 20 million Negro brothers smothering in an airtight cage of poverty in the midst of an affluent society, when you suddenly find your tongue twisted and your speech stammering as you seek to explain to your six-year-old daughter why she can't go to the public amusement park that has been advertised on TV and see tears welling up in her eyes when she's told that Fun Town is closed to colored children and see ominous clouds of inferiority beginning to form in her little mental sky and see her beginning to distort her personality by developing an unconscious bitterness towards white people when you have to concoct an answer for a five-year-old son who asks, Daddy, why do white people treat colored people so bad? And the day-by-day -day nagging, reading signs that say white and colored, when your first name is N-word and your middle name is boy and your last name is John, and your wife and mother are never given the respect they are due. When you're harassed by day and haunted by night by the fact that you are a Negro, living constantly at tiptoe stays, stays, never quite knowing what to expect, and are plagued with inner fears and outer resentments. Then you will understand why it's difficult to wait. We will... One other, he, he said, we will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the hateful words of actions of bad people, but for the appalling silence of good people. We must use creativity in the knowledge that time is always ripe to do right. Now is the time to make real the promise of democracy and transform our pending national elegy into a creative psalm of brotherhood. Now is the time to lift our national policy from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of human dignity. That was 1963. And you can change the, the day and time, and it's what we're enduring right now. But we have to understand also, my brothers and sisters, that now is the time for us to know that God is faithful. Now is the time for us to know that we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Now is the time for us to study, to show ourselves approved, to stand up and be those who are chosen by God, to have stability in our character and nobility in our name. Now is the time for us to put our trust in God. Now is the time for us to share our faith with one another. Now is the time for us to encourage each other to do what God has called us to do in this generation. The word says, I pray that your faith will not fail. So now is the time for us to get up, as Peter said, and make your calling and your election sure. Now is the time because in 2022, what are those things? that we are so afraid of. What are we afraid of? These things, all of these things, bomb threats, underfunding of our schools, stripping of our rights, repeal of the Voting Rights Act, redaction of the truth, trying to rewrite our truth and rewrite our history, fire hoses daily of false and fake information, obfuscation of the obvious. For example, saying that we were not slaves, we came here by way of involuntary relocation from Africa. The devil is a liar. You will not rewrite our history. We will tell our children what you did to us what you did to our ancestors to our grandmothers and great grandmothers and great grandfathers we will tell the truth what do we say to these things these things when we see the crisis of death the calamities of life the intrusion of the orange man and all his minions. The devil is a liar. We will stand for truth, for justice, for righteousness because God is faithful. And in all these things, 
We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. We know that God loves us. We receive the promise of God that says, keep moving forward. Even if they threaten you, even if they lie on you, even if they have an insurrection in the, in the capital, keep moving forward. Even if they're deceitful and dishonest as lawyers and teachers and government leaders, continue to keep moving forward. Even if they steal the documents from the White House and try to hide them, keep moving forward. Even if they cause trouble and conflict in your life, keep moving forward because God is faithful. He says, you can count on me. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about what people are saying. Yes, they are laughing and think they got over, but this is a spiritual fight. Sometimes you need to know that God is on your side and you need to make sure that you come to the house of God and lift holy hands and understand that when you think of his goodness and all that he's already done in your life, your soul cries out, hallelujah. When we come to this house, we say God is faithful. And if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. So my brothers and sisters, we got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We got to know that God's got our back. God is on our six. God is with us. God has made ways for us. God has opened doors for us. And God will give you strength for the journey. I am who God says I am. I know what it might look like, but I also know that I owe him praise for all that he's done. I owe him praise for every hole he has dug me out of. I owe him praise for every opportunity. In spite of my sin, he still keeps blessing me. In spite of when he told me to go left, I went right, but he's still blessing me. He sends an intervention of angels to watch over me. And so just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who told Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us in the furnace all you want, but our God is able to save us. So we got to receive that this morning, that God is faithful. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we are able to ask or think. So we got to rise up and do what God has called us to do. We got to be those chosen ones who know that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We will not be intimidated. We will not believe the lies, but we will march. We will march and we will vote. We will march and we will vote. We will protect our rights. We will protect our freedom and know that God is on our side. Romans 11, 12 says, rejoice in our confident hope and be patient in trouble, but keep on praying. So we know prayer changes things. Prayer changes situations. Prayer changes circumstances. Prayer gets you closer to God. Prayer allows you to have that conversation way down deep on the inside that says, God, I need you. I need you right now. So we have to know God is faithful, Ebenezer. God is faithful over a few. He said, if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. So it says to us today as we prepare to leave this place, I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. I got a feeling everything.
everything is going to be all right. The Holy Ghost told me everything is going to be all right because God is faithful. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that we are his own. God is faithful. So we will lift our eyes to the hills from which comes our help, knowing our help, our six, our back, everything we need comes from the Lord. So we will leave this place knowing we can't give up now. We've cried too much. We've sacrificed too much. We've given too much to give up now. Nobody told us that the road was going to be easy. But I know, I know, I know God did not bring us this far to leave us now. So understand and receive in your spirit. God is faithful. Give him praise. Give him praise for his faithfulness to you. Tell your story. Share your testimony. Let somebody know what God has done in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. God is faithful. God is faithful. What shall we say? God is faithful. We know it for ourselves. So as children of the Most High God, we stand all over the church. We share our testimony. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let everybody know, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of salvation. Then we talk about salvation. We talk about God having your back. But first, you got to know him. First, you got to know him. And you got to accept him as Lord and Savior over your life. So we stand today, hallelujah, able, all who are able to lift their hands and say, thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Oh, no, you need to be excited. Thank God. I'm saying.